What's he thinking? He doesn't know, and I was there. We don't know what we think until we say it out loud, and he's not saying anything at all. Thinking about the future. Well, the past is less provocative, and today the past is lazy jacks. Those lines I have rigged to hold the sail on the boom when you lower it, or to steady it before you raise it. They work very well, but the sail cover has slots in it, and that means 55 snaps. So I thought last time to de-rig it, not to use the snaps. But that means that each time you have to re-rig the lazy jacks, which doesn't take much time, but it's just another one of those little annoyances that slows you down. Well, we'll see what the right thing to do is. Lazy jacks up or lazy jacks down. They do work very well. Good to be on the water again because the boat has just been hauled out for a week for the maintenance required every four years or so here in Southern California. We leave the boats in 12 months a year and the bottom pane has to be periodically renewed and also the hull inspected, which you really can't do when it's in the water. That's a travel lift. In the old days, it was a marine railway. These are more efficient. It's good to look at your rudder, which is an important part of the boat. And it shouldn't have much play in it. There are bushings in there, the rudder post inside the rudder tube. It should have less than well, maybe a quarter of an inch of play, at most a half an inch. This boat hasn't been power washed yet. The bottom's remarkably clean after four years, but then I do have a diver that comes every month and scrubs it by hand. This is the 35-year-old propeller shaft, which looks fine to me. Ho, ho. The idea was to replace the dripless shaft seal, which uh, you can use instead of a traditional stuffing box. It doesn't drip. The installation requires the propeller shaft to be pushed back about a foot and disconnected from the transmission by the coupling there. And here's what a brand new one looks like with its through hull fitting and irrigation hose. And of course what looked fine to me didn't look so fine to the boatyard. So I'm now the owner of a new stainless steel propeller shaft and cutlass bearing. These are the through-hull fittings for the uh, engine cooling seawater and the sink drain. The black bottom paint will be renewed and the gray showing underneath it is the barrier coat that protects against blisters. For a time this boat sat in the mud at low tide, so that'll be repainted. Thelonious is a 1984 Ericsson 381, meaning it's 38 feet long, and it still has the original speed paddle wheel, whereas uh, most folks today who aren't racing use GPS speed. These are through hull fittings that drain the cockpit, there are four of them, and the two small ones drain propane lockers because propane is heavier than air. Interesting hull form compared to the latest in yacht design. This boat has a bow thruster, which makes docking easier. You can go a little bit sideways, and you're left with a big hole in your hull. This morning we didn't have much wind at all, and now uh, when I motored out of the, past the breakwater, the wind was from the east, which is backwards here. And now, when we're a mile offshore, we've picked up a more of a southerly with these big, short wavelength swells.
If you didn't have anything to do on a Selbu, you'd just sit there. So if you want to just sit there, don't buy a sailboat. Those lazy jacks really need further adjustment, don't you think? Well, it gives me an excuse to go up to the mast and fiddle around with the lines, which is what's fun. That's much better, don't you think? Why, look at that, a four-inch adjustment. Very satisfying. But nothing's as nice as a close reach with another boat keeping pace off the stern quarter. Handsome. That's a Merit 25, a very able little boat with pretty lines, I think. Every sailor looks at every boat as if it was the last one he'll ever see. It's morning, so it's Diet Coke time. I keep the beverages in the refrigerator in bags. It saves groveling around in the dark looking for a particular brand of sarsaparilla. And sometimes when I go below, I like to just listen to the sounds the sailboat makes as it meanders along at five knots on a winter's day. Oh, lines on the deck. You know, they're really slippery. Varnish has a tacky feeling that makes for good footing, but step on one errant line and your tea kettle turns upside down. Let's tack through 140 degrees by pushing the wheel pilot button 14 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What is he thinking? Well, that's the whole Pacific Ocean out there. Two or three weeks to Hawaii. Another week to Midway. Another month to Japan or bear off south or New Zealand and beyond. No one hears what you're thinking. Our thoughts are our own. Or almost no one. <laughs> 